In the first part of this series we took a look at the idea that many species of extraterrestrial regularly visit this planet. Renowned ufologist Nancy Malacaria saying that over 200 species spend a couple of weeks travelling time to reach our planet from the deepest darkest parts of our solar system. In part 1 we took a look at the good and bad, in this part we are going to take a look at the ugly. Let's finish the story and find out what she has to say. Welcome to IF, videos on mystery and history, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss a video again. Nancy says she is in regular contact with the different forms of alien life which visit this planet. Talking about her experiences she told newspapers, the average time it takes the visiting races to reach earth from their own worlds is 2 weeks. It's no problem at all for any of the visiting races to hide themselves and their crafts from us, they hide dimensionally. Nancy confirms what we asked in the last video, that there is a group which monitors this alien presence on the planet. This group is managed by the US government and they track these aliens down. Nancy said the authorities are hunting them and hunting the humans who work with them. Wherever the aliens are detected they are framed for crimes, to scare the public away and to prevent or ruin any budding intergalactic trust. So as we move forward with President Trump's idea of a space force, it's funny how Nancy talks of the earth being a part of a galactic union. This union is said to comprise of over 5000 worlds from 5 other galaxies these groups working in something that would be reminiscent of Star Trek's Federation of Planets. The work they do makes sure our planet is protected, claims that in the past they have stopped nuclear conflict engulfing the globe. This would most likely be due to the help of the Nordic aliens we talked about in part 1. This race helping humanity and advancing us to a future where we will all join them in the stars. The Greys who we also discussed maybe not so much, they would more likely be working with those that could hasten the destruction of our home. So we looked at the good and the bad, that just leaves the ugly, and these guys are the ugliest, that is when they are not wearing the faces of the rich and famous and beautiful. The reptilians, these reptoids have the facial features associated with all reptiles with slightly conical shaped heads covered with a row of bony ridges that begin at the forehead and continue all the way down the back of the skull. There is a small hump in place of a nose and slits in the nasal area, these presumably to breathe, they have similar slits in place of ears. The speculated history and agenda of these reptilian aliens is as follows, there are numerous theories and ideas regarding the alien race known as the reptilians. Some sources say that they originate from the star constellation called Draco, another idea is that a group of far more ancient aliens seeded our planet with the reptilians, this explaining the ideas that there has been a subspecies dwelling here since prehistory. From witness testimony of sightings of these scaled ETs or the earth dwelling brethren, reptilian beings are humanoid in form standing between 6 to 9 feet in height, they are physically intimidating being very muscular, they possess long arms and legs ending in 3 long fingers and 1 thumb on each hand, their skin has a variety of colorations ranging from dark green to brown with scales similar to those of a snake, some reports state they also have long crocodilian like tails. Some major differences between the two groups would be that those from Draco have wings which are reported to have a span of 6 to 7 feet, their basic body type is like that of the earth reptilians but they have horns on their heads, some reports say these continue along the length of the spine. The subspecies that inhabit earth differ somewhat from their spacefaring kin, being more human like in size and appearance 
And of course, we mustn't forget that this is how they disguise themselves and walk among us according to some. There is a theory that these ETs gave rise to the myths and legends of dragons and or the winged gods found in ancient Chinese, Greek and Indian writings. The most popular example of this being the claim that the Aztec god Coetzacotl was in fact a reptilian. So what is the reptilian agenda? Abductees claim that the reptilians are a fierce race using force to coerce and intimidate those that they capture. Conspiracy theories regarding these cold-blooded beasts continue to grow saying that the reptilians are a malevolent group seeking to dominate the planet and others in the galaxy. Going back to part 1 of this topic, it is thought that they are the ones who cloned the grey aliens, this in an attempt to create a slave race. This plan they had for the greys obviously failed and now they have designs to enslave humanity. Famously, David Icke, a British writer and avid conspiracy publisher, believes that they have interbred with humans, this forming an elite class. These elites now hold positions of power in all governments, businesses, banking and royal families. Being able to shapeshift, they hide their true identities, the occasional slips in their disguises being a whole new theme of YouTube videos you can disappear into for hours. These earth dwelling reptoids hide in deep underground bases and when above ground like to inhabit caves. They are the basis for a network that wants to corrupt and bring down the age of man and introduce the age of reptilian overlords. There are others that also visit that are still very mysterious with one or two sightings and not much more in the way of evidence or testimony. These types of aliens are reported from close encounters of a third kind. We hear strange stories such as the occurrence of the Hopkinsville goblins, small greenish silver humanoids whom terrorized a family in the rural US. The Flatwoods monster, a tall humanoid with a spade shaped head that appeared mysteriously one night leaving witnesses sick and suffering after they breathed in the smoke that surrounded the strange visitor. And then there's the B-movie favorite, Little Green Men. These small green humanoids being more a creation of Hollywood with no report ever being made involving anything that would fit this classical cultural stereotype. The idea that unknown aliens visit us here on earth communicating and abducting us seems far fetched to some and exciting to others. What do you think? Do you believe aliens exist? Do you know anyone whom has had a first hand experience? If you have experience with an alien being, which type was it? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoy what we do here on the channel, please hit that subscribe button, like and share. You can find us across social media by searching We Are If. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.